here is this bad news of newly baptized Bible student of mine, Rogelin Galvadores, now a member of Bangkok Adventist Hospital, he just sent me this message, urgent financial assistance, request for Daryl Libris, medical expense, fundraising with a go get funding. And it says, hi everyone, I'm sending this to those in our support Daryl, uh, Lorraine group individually, as mentioned previously, by now the hospital bill for Daryl is colossal. It is already over 800,000 and none is settled as yet. As you can see, instead of collecting the donation before giving it to Lorraine, we are giving Lorraine's Crown Thai Bank account, which she normally does not use to collect and receive directly donation. Any friends who wish to contribute towards settling outstanding uh, hospital bill, that way it is up to the individual whether they wish to remain anonymous or they wish to make sure that the deposit is received. And so it says here, you can deposit it Joanna Lorraine Libris Kong Thai Bank. Uh, nine five five zero one two four two three one. God bless. Okay, so Rosalind said that uh, she just forwarded because this person used to be her apartment, uh, maybe next person dwellers, and so well I trust her because she was my newly baptized student last year, and I sent some amount, not so much, just based on the blessing that God has gave me. And so I went to the website, go get funding, urgent financial assistance request for Daryl Libres. And I found out that she's, he is in a bad condition, like having a pulmonary hypertension on uh, January 15, early this year. And he, he was admitted to Ramathibudi Hospital. That's not good. And so he needed a heart and lung transplant, but uh, two weeks later, it's a miracle that it was gone, actually. Uh, he was not allowed to undergo, but uh, he saved himself from it. Now, the problem is he has this cocktail of medications and it's a heavy burden to the family and even to, to him, even his medical insurance could not cover all the expenses. And so what happened because of that, I believe this is the problem now of that uh, medication. On November 18, 2019, last month, Daryl was admitted again to the Red Cross now to Lankun Hospital. But two cardiac arrests. Now that's not good. Three organs, heart, lungs, and kidneys are not functioning well. And so he has to use three specialized machines which are very, very expensive. And so what happened? The ICU uh, regular okay that 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 place is like twenty thousand baht per day and so now it has gone up to eight hundred thousand baht after nine days using those specialized machines so his current health insurance plan cannot actually cover it you see that even if he is ready for it and uh, he needs help they need help it's impossible for them to figure out because right now maybe right now it's more than that maybe about a million now and so they are members of the evangelical church of bangkok and uh he Darrell is a lay leader of the main ministry and uh, we are to help them this is our opportunity so i donated some i would like you to donate also because it's important go to this contact bank if it is easy for you uh, copy this number and send uh, your donation right now based on the blessings god gave you god does not Look at the amount, but on the percentage, on the blessings he gives you. God bless. Now, I'd like to look at here what the Bible says in Matthew 25 here. Uh, those on the right hand in verse 34, God said, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Okay? Like, come, you blessed of my father. Why? Verse 36 is so clear. I was naked. I was sick. You visited me. You help me, you know, this, uh, in other words, they help the needy, uh, even if they say, why did we help you? And in verse 40, the king said, well, you you done it to the least of my brother, you done it to me. However, verse 41, those who are not helpful to the needy, to the sick, are in a dangerous situation because in verse 41 says, depart from me, you curse into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. Why is that? The reason is verse 42. They were in need of food 
uh, dreams, they were sick, but then they were not being helped. And they keep asking, oh, when did we help? When did we not help you? Well, what you did to the least of my brethren, verse 45, you did it to me. And so you go into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into everlasting life. I'm not scaring each one. I'm just saying here responsibility for each one that our responsibility is really to help and that it is very, very basic in the law because the law is loving God and the second part of the law is loving our fellow men. So we are to help our brothers and sisters who are in need. I want you to consider these questions tonight if you have your care group meeting. Answer this one or can be a source of your discussion. When will you help Daryl and other loved ones and friends in real need? All right? I suggest you help them now even if your amount or income is little because God gives you. We help because God blesses us. Second, when will you save for emergencies? If you were Daryl, I want you to picture yourself that that person is yourself, not Daryl. Do you have any emergency savings? Well, answer that question with your care group. Third, is your current occupation preparing you for a real emergency such as almost 1 million baht cost? Like it happens to Daryl, 800,000 baht already in just 9 days. I want you to, dis to discuss it with your care group. Four, what will you really do if your monthly savings are not enough for such emergencies? What I mean, Senator Elizabeth Warren in 2014 suggested this 50, 30, 20 rule in budgeting. For example, the 20% should be used for your future, for your savings, okay? And uh, for example, before that, she says 30% for your wants and 50% for your needs. For example, out of the average monthly income in Thailand is 15,000 baht, you save 20%. So monthly you have 3,000. So in... 60 months, that is five years, you will have 180,000 of savings. So little, not enough to cover the medical bills. Even if your income is two times 30,000, save 20% of that, 6,000 monthly baht. And uh, for five years, you only have 360,000. Not enough again. Even if your income is doubled to 60,000 baht, you save monthly. Uh, 12,000, that is 20%, and for five years, you save 720,000 baht, it's not enough again to cover. You double your income to 120,000 baht, saves 20%, 24,000 baht monthly for five years, 60 months. Well, you have about 1.4 million, 40,000, like Fortuner. Takes five years. What if? That is only for one person in that particular week. And what if next month another person of your family has the same problem again? Then you will wait for another five years. Correct? That is why Robert Kiyosaki said, savers are losers. It just means that 20% savings is not enough even if your income is 100,000 baht. So what to do? Well, there seems to be a problem with Warren's 50, 30, 20 budget rule because the 20% for savings is not enough. How about the 30%? Well, bad thing here is she allocates it for ones for shopping, dining out, habits. That makes the problem. Well, if you're a Christian, you have to actually revise that 50, 30, 20 budget rule into 20% savings, 30% investing, and 50% needs. Why is that? Well, if you go back to the Bible, you understand that the Bible talks about eternal investments like 10% tithes, another 10% uh, for second tithe, and a promise offering that's about one person to even more, up to you, and have the free will offerings. If you're going to, to uh, break it down, it would be like this, that 10% for tithe, about 23% for offerings and second tithe, and even more, that is 33% already. So you can just run it off to 
And uh, that was taught by Pastor Marcus Bonfin of the General Conference Stewardship Director last year, June 18 to 20, 2018, right? In Bangkok, leaders of the Southern Asia Pacific Division came to Bangkok for more than 10 countries. Well, look, the Bible is so clear. Will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me? But you say, how have you robbed me? How have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. In other words, we cannot touch that 30% for investing. And even I taught that in the church and I followed it. And I even made this into an evangelistic meeting like seven days to become financially free, putting God first. So you can see. Right? That was in May. Well, what happened is May, June, July, I was tried. Maybe, I don't know if it is by the devil. But God allowed it to have that my salary was just cut into less than half. What a challenge. Just I, I imagine Job was tried with the devil allowed by God to happen. Well, I was just laughing. What happened to me was a challenge. I understood and I tried to understand really about stewardship. What went wrong? Why? Uh, this is a big challenge for us, for, for most of us. You would say and look at it like a problem. I have found out that our leaders do not talk about, they never talk about advanced financial stewardship. It means that 30% for eternal investment, that is only basic. Okay? Whether you like it or not, that is only basic. Even if we follow that, well, we have another question we need to answer. Since you cannot touch the 30% budget for investing, because that is not yours, but for God and others, where will you get the budget to prepare for your possible emergency later? Okay? Malachi 3, 10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, and that includes offering, because the previous verse 8, tithes and offerings that will cause you to rob him if you don't give. And there may be food in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord. There's a promise. I will not, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, if you test him, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Is it wonderful? This is not prosperity preaching. God is indeed promising that if you are faithful to him, he will open up the windows of heaven. For what? For wants or for needs? So let's look at here in the 50, 30, 20 budget rule. What is the problem here? Okay. If you look at it from Haggai 2, 8, that God is the source of money, the silver is mine, the gold is mine, the clay is the Lord. It means that the whole pie, 100% is God's. All right. And we are not free to use it whatever we want. We cannot use it for whatever we want, but only according to what he wants. In that case, Instead of just 20% savings and 30% investing to be used and convert into an asset, what do we do with the 50%? So clear. Philippians 4.19, But my God shall supply all your wants. Wants? Or sorry, not wants. Needs. According to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In other words, we are to stick to that 50% budget for needs and that is not for once the problem we have is that we use it for once instead of needs it has to be only for needs so strictly speaking only this is the christian budget rule now in matthew 6 it says but you seek first seek you first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you all these things does not include, they do not include the ones like luxurious watch, iPhone, whatever gadget that you have, anything you want. Because the context says they are food, shelter, clothing, you know. And so, they are, all these things means need. And Malachi 3 says that I'll pour you out a blessing, a blessing for all the needs that we need. Okay, all the things that we need, not the wants. Now we put it in the better context now. And so I call it 50, 30, 20 
biblical budget rule, and I call it advanced stewardship because it is not taught, never been taught this way, that we can use the whole pie that even 20, 30, 50% for God, for his purposes, if we put God first, and that is to be used wisely. As a wise steward of God, we are to use. So what do we do with the 50% needs? Okay, I have found out that we can turn that into an asset. Not only the 30% used for an asset for investing for eternity, and a 20% saving, can be used for your investing here on earth for wholesome and not mammonic investments but you can also use the 50 percent needs and turn them into an asset asset means is anything that would put money back into your pocket and so if you buy and you use any expenses anywhere else and they do not return to you they are liabilities what I want you to do with your church or group or family or whatever, consider this one. Invite me. I will give this more to you in detail. How to turn your needs, budget, and expenses into an asset. And if you follow this, this is a proven system already. In two to five years, you will save yourself from that kind of trouble. Your stock market cannot save you in five years, even if your income is 120,000. Believe me, go back to the mathematical calculation that I use. If you follow the biblical principles and turn also this whole pie, especially the 50% needs budget into an asset. How? Invite me, I will show you the plan, how to do it. We will save ourselves. My heart is very painful whenever our church members do not get this idea and are not serious in using God's money for His glory, especially in wasting the 50% budget for needs into wants and other things. I want you to continue, brother and sister. Do this one before you need it, before you land in the hospital, before any emergency happens, before you... You, you cry for your loved ones who is in need, even if the income is 100000 Your insurance cannot help. Now, there is a way out. I will show you the plan. Invite me. Our partner is God, and we will do it with him. God bless you and your family and your church.